Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the next gen patch is finally available for The Witcher 3 and with it comes upgraded visuals and added features. We can now play the game in DX11 or DX12 with FSR2 or DLSS where supported and from what I've tested so far it does look a lot better. Of course our focus here is budget and that got me wondering how well this game will run on an aging GTX 760, a card that has no problem running the original 2015 release. I picked up this old banger for less than 20 quid here in the UK and despite the end of game ready driver support and lack of DX12 capabilities, it can still handle old games, The Witcher 3 being one of them. If you wanted 60 FPS then opting for the low quality settings would have done the trick, with the game still being instantly recognisable despite the visual sacrifices. The low graphical and post processing presets were my go to choice back when I used a 750 Ti on a daily basis. If 30 FPS is fine for you, just as it was for millions of last gen console gamers back in 2015, then you could almost go all out and hit this figure with the 2GB760 in your system. Of course the processor I'm using today is way more powerful than almost everything that existed 7 years ago, so that is definitely helping us out here I'm sure. I think you'll agree that at Ultra, The Witcher 3 still holds up in 2022, but this is of course pre-patch gameplay. The next gen patch brings the game up to version 4 and thankfully it still runs on the DX11 GTX 760. In fact it'll start in DX12 mode as well despite the card not fully supporting DX12. It supports 11.0 at feature level. Now because it starts we do have access to the additional DX12 options such as dynamic resolution scaling and FSR2 though as is the same in Cyberpunk 2077, enabling FSR2 will cause a black screen issue in game, no matter what we choose to enable or disable elsewhere. Even if we enable FSR from the configuration files, we get the same result. It's a shame because it would have really helped us out with this newer version, especially because the low settings this time around are far more demanding for the 2GB GTX card. There is now an added screen space reflections option this time around which can be set to high or low and in this case it's set to low but I don't think this is responsible for the drop in performance and honestly don't think that this means going even higher with the settings is hopeless because it's not. For those wondering by the way, I was able to get the MSI Afterburner overlay working in DX12 mode thanks to a helpful short tutorial by Edward Gaming here on YouTube. The overlay doesn't work by default at the time of upload in DX12, so I'll leave a link to that video, but as with all user fixes, use at your own discretion. In DX12 mode we also have access to the aforementioned dynamic resolution scaling option which can be enabled in order to hit a higher frame rate but the game looks quite blurry especially at 1080p. 60fps was doable sometimes but there are still dips and drops all over the place and hitting a constant 60fps just isn't possible. It's better performance wise and it's up to you if you want to go down this route but I want to show you something quite surprising now. Now playing at high or ultra like we did pre-patch isn't achievable now but we aren't limited to the lowest values. I played around with the settings for a bit and came up with my own custom recommendation for playing with an old graphics card like this. The thing is the following settings do come with a 30 fps target in mind but I think that's more sensible given the hardware and considering that the following settings actually give us an end result that still retains the next gen look without completely destroying the frame rate. SSAO is off and screen space reflections are set to low. Motion blur and blur is off, so is depth of field. These are all off because of personal preference and won't affect performance. Light shafts and camera lens effects are also disabled. Hairworks is disabled because it's very demanding, or was at least before the patch, but I'm assuming the same is still true for older cards. Number of background characters is high, shadow quality is low, terrain is high, water is medium, foliage range is low, and so is grass density. 
I've been pretty daring with the textures at medium, so I'm not sure how that's going to pan out yet, but we'll see. Detail level is also set to medium. Now I did start with FXAA for the anti-aliasing, but I went back and chose TAAU instead as it ironed out some of those jagged edges, but it made the image a bit softer. Setting the sharpening level to low solved this problem. If we jump back into the game, you can see that we are still going to get at least 30 FPS, but performance is a bit all over the place. Don't forget that we also have the option of lowering the native resolution, which still goes all the way down to 1024 by 768 so if you don't mind less sharpness overall but want to keep a more next-gen look to the game, you can go this low. Now at native 1080p under DX11, we do hit at least 30 FPS, and when switching back to DX12, while once again enabling the dynamic resolution scaling, the frame rate is even higher. If you don't mind the blurrier presentation, this is also an okay way to play, but there are still a lot of performance dips here and there, and I can't speak on how stable the game will remain through the entirety of your playthrough when running in DX12 mode on a card that doesn't fully support it. I did notice a couple of flickers here and there that weren't present when playing at DX11, so my preferred way to play would be at DX11 with native 1080p or lower. Now to finalise, I want to go back to DX11 mode with my recommended settings at 1080p of course, and look at how implementing a 30fps cap improves things. 30fps is how the game runs on PS4 and Xbox One, and on the current gen consoles with higher quality mode, albeit with better visuals and resolution. Considering the GTX 760 is as old as it is, I'm surprised it can handle the next gen update with a respectable selection of settings while maintaining 30 most of the time. This is a snippet of uncapped gameplay before I switch to the capped gameplay to show you how things change, or I should say get more consistent. You can cap the game from within the game, but doing it with Reva Tuner gives us better percentile lows or a smoother experience. To put it simply, typing 30 in the frame limiter box does the trick and after loading up a few save games, I was pleasantly surprised that it will still stick to this cap more often than not, though as expected a few high impact areas do have their way with this near decade old GPU. I'd much rather play at a capped 30fps with 1080p and a mixture of settings that still mean the next gen update looks somewhat next gen, as opposed to setting everything to low and stuttering across the open world with not so great visuals and a variable frame rate. The beauty of PC gaming is that everyone can choose to play how they want, but ultimately at the end of this video, the conclusion is that yes, you can play The Witcher 3 on an old card like this one. There is a lot of lost performance over the previous previous version of the game, that's for sure, which is a bit of a shame, but if you want a taste of what the patch has to offer and don't mind implementing a performance cap, then you can do so, and you'll still find yourself in awe at some of the visuals on offer. That's all for this one then, if you enjoyed it leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know how the next gen patch performs on your system down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.